You already noticed the air feels different. Sharper mountains, lighter haze. That's not your imagination. Since 1995, power plant sulfur emissions across Appalachia have dropped more than 90%. Visibility in some valleys went from just five miles to over 100 miles. But if the air is cleaner, why doesn't every community feel the same? The numbers and the uneven consequences reveal what really changed. Coal-fired power shaped life across these mountains for generations. The Tennessee Valley Authority ran plants in seven states, burning coal day and end night to keep the lights on from Kentucky to Alabama. The result hung in the air. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides from those smokestacks did not just vanish. They drifted out over the valleys, mixing with sunlight and moisture. In the sky, those chemicals turned into fine particles, so small you could not see them, but they scattered light and thickened the air into a grayish haze. That is what settled between the ridges, blurring the horizon, making the mountains look faded even on a sunny day. By the early 2000s, the problem was impossible to ignore. On the worst days in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, you might only see five miles ahead. The rest was lost in a white veil. Scientists measured it with special monitors, but anyone who had grown up here could tell you there were summers when you could not see the next ridge at all. The natural blue mist, the kind that gave these mountains their name, was buried under layers of pollution. Without all that haze, you could see more than 100 miles from the high points. But for years, that kind of clarity was just a memory or something you would only see in a postcard from long ago. The haze was not just from one plant or one town. It was the sum of decades of burning and dumping day after day across the whole region. Sulfur and nitrogen from coal plants drifted on the wind, settled on porches, and hung in the air. The fine particles they created, what scientists call PM 2.5, were small enough to get deep into your lungs. But their first effect was on your view. Every ridge, every valley, every sunrise came with that same washed out look. It was a part of daily life, so common that folks stopped talking about it but never stopped noticing. The air was thick, the mountains looked tired, and everyone knew the reason why. The Tennessee Valley Authority didn't just power homes, it changed the AIR itself. Starting in the late 1970s, TVA began cutting back on sulfur dioxide from its smokestacks. By 2024, those emissions had dropped by more than 90%. That kind of reduction doesn't happen by accident. Plants added scrubbers huge machines built to pull sulfur out of the exhaust before it could drift into the sky. Some switched to cleaner coal, but the biggest difference came from shutting down the oldest, dirtiest units. Nitrogen oxides followed a similar path. TVA plants cut those by more than 90% since 1995. Nationally, power plant sulfur emissions fell 95% between 1995 and 2023. The numbers are right there in EPA reports and trend lines that stretch back decades. Every year, the totals drop lower. Each new regulation brought another round of upgrades. Each closure took another source of haze off the map. The real turning point came in 2013. TVA began retiring some of its biggest coal units. That year, the pace of change picked up. The dirtiest stacks went quiet. The air above the valleys started to clear a little faster. For people living nearby, it wasn't just about the numbers in a report. It was the first time in a generation that the horizon looked different. This wasn't a small adjustment. It was a steady, determined effort that played out over decades. Scrubbers, plant retirements, cleaner fuels, each one chipped away at the problem. The result is more than just a policy win. It's the reason the mountains don't look as tired as they used to. The reason the haze isn't as thick. The reason people started to notice something had changed, even before the scientists finished their graphs. On a clear morning now, you can stand on a ridge and count every fold of the mountains. The difference isn't subtle. 
park records show that on the haziest days in the late 1990s and early 2000s, visibility averaged just nine miles. Today, that number is closer to 11 miles. It's a gain of about 20% in the last decade alone. For people who pay attention, that means hills and valleys that used to fade into the white are sharp again. The outlines of distant peaks, once lost in the wash, are visible from overlooks that hadn't seen that kind of clarity in years. It's not just about distance. The natural blue mist, the one that comes from the trees themselves, is coming back into view. That blue isn't pollution, it's the land breathing. For a long time, it was buried under layers of man-made haze. Now, on good days, the old color is visible again. The numbers from the monitors back up what your eyes have been telling you all along. The mountains look more like themselves. The air isn't just cleaner, it's clearer. Cleaner air isn't just something you see, it's something you breathe. Fine particles, uh, what scientists call PM 2.5, are small enough to slip past your body's defenses and settle deep in your lungs. Across the country, these tiny particles are linked to 100,000 premature deaths each year. Heart attacks, asthma, lung cancer, communities near coal plants have always carried more of that burden. That's why so many people care about what's in the air, not just how far they can see. In 2024, the EPA tightened the standard for fine particle pollution. The annual limit dropped from 12 micrograms per cubic meter to 9 micrograms per cubic meter. Meeting that new standard could prevent thousands of early deaths every year, but official monitors only cover so much ground. So neighbors stepped in. Around 40 citizen-run air sensors now track dust and particles across five Appalachian states. Some are set up near old mines, others by busy highways or near factories. The data shows real improvement, but it also catches dust spikes, especially when trucks or blasting stir up the ground. Cleaner air means healthier lungs, but the work isn't finished. People here know what's at stake and they're keeping watch themselves. 88 coal plant sites across Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Pennsylvania have gone quiet. Some closed for good, others sit idle waiting for a decision. For the people who worked at those plants, the change is not just in the air, it is in their daily lives. Some spent decades on the job, clocking in before sunrise, coming home with the smell of coal still in their clothes. Now those jobs are gone and the future feels uncertain. Utilities weigh their options, debating whether to keep a few old plants running longer as energy demand grows. There is talk of extensions, not just retirements. The debate is not settled. Even with the big cuts in pollution, not every problem is solved. Abandoned mines still leak runoff into streams, staining the water orange, and leaving a bitter taste in the mouths of people who fish or farm nearby. Dust from old sites drifts on windy days, settling on porches and ca- The air is cleaner, but the land still carries reminders of what came before. For many, the change is real, but unfinished. The mountains are clearer, but the story of this place is still being written. There is pride in what has been gained in questions about what is next. Cleaner air is real, but so is uncertainty. As old industries fade and new pressures rise, the choices made now will decide what Appalachian skies look and feel like for the next generation. The view is clearer, but the future still belongs to those who pay attention. Thanks for watching.